What's up everyone, in this video we're going to go over the blocks field in Payload CMS. Before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notifications each time I post a new video about Payload CMS and more. Now let's dive in. The blocks field is used to store an array of objects that you define elsewhere to be reused anywhere. Each block field has its own unique schema which you set. You can use blocks to create a flexible content model. Blocks allow you to create highly customizable pages and post layouts using a single field across documents instead of having preset groupings of fields set at the collection level. This grants you the flexibility you need to create pages that follow similar templates but allow for different layouts. While you can create blocks in any collection, it's best practice to create a separate directory called blocks and create a new file named after the block you want to create. Since Next.js and Payload CMS are now fully integrated, you can even include the component files in this directory to keep everything together. After creating a block, you can then import it into the collection you'd like to enable blocks in by adding a blocks field with some configuration options. So let's get started with creating a simple block. We're going to create in our source directory a new blocks directory. So we've added blocks there and we're going to create a simple block called content with media. So we're going to create a new TypeScript file called content with media. At the top of this new content with media TypeScript file, we're going to import our block from payload. And now we can export a new const that we'll call content with media, assign it the block type, and set it equal to an empty object. And then we're ready to set configuration options. First, we need to set the slug. This is how we're going to be able to identify it in our front end when we query a collection. So first we need to add a slug, which we will create as content with media. You can change how this block's title is displayed on the payload dashboard by setting your labels property using an object that contains an option for both singular and plural versions of your label. So we'll do that now. And so we'll set this label as singular content with media block, and then plural will be content with media blocks. Now, label is not a required field. Slug is, and there is one other required field which is called fields. So we can open that up as an array, and we'll keep this simple by only including a rich text field, an image field, and a radio button that allows us to toggle between text on the left or the right. You may also want to include other fields like a header section or a field to set an anchor ID, but for now, let's just do a new type, which will be rich text, and the name will be content. Then we're going to add another field type upload with name set to image in relation to, since it's an upload field, and this will be relation to media. And then we're going to set one more type of radio with a name of text position. And then we're going to set two options, which will be left or right. We can then import this block into our collection of choice as a field, and we'll see the ability to add a block added to the dashboard. So let's do this now by going to our post config, going to our fields section, and we'll go to the top of our fields, where we're going to add a new field with type of blocks, with blocks set to an array, where we're going to import our content with media block. The only other required field here is name, which we're just going to call block test. You can use this now to set the order of how you want things to render on the front end. So now we're in our post collection. We'll go to this no title post and we can see here add block test. So block test is what the name of our field is called. And when I add block test, a drawer opens up where I have content with media block and I can select that. And then I have the ability to add content 
to add an image and to set the text position left and right. So I can save that. And then when I go to the API, you can see the response down here in block test with all of the content there. Aside from the required fields, there are other unique options available to you for block fields. There are three sets of config option for blocks, field, admin, and block configs. As a field, blocks have many of the same configuration options available as other fields. The name and blocks options are of course required, but you're also able to change how the block's name is displayed by using label. You can disable the label by setting label to false. So let's take a look at that. First, we'll go back to our edit page. So we can see add block test there. Then we can use label and set this to false to see what happens. Now it just says add block instead of the block name. And we can even set labels here with singular content with media block, and then set plural to content with media blocks. And now we can see that that label is taking place here instead of the original label. Since the blocks field is like an array field, you can use min rows and max rows to restrict how many blocks can be included in any collections block field. So for example, we already have one row, but we can set a max row of, we'll say 20. And so now no more than 20 blocks can be included in this field. And since any block can be included here, these labels don't quite make sense. So we're going to delete those and just have this say add block. Like most other fields, you can set fine tuned access controls to the field to control who can create, read, update, or delete blocks or operate this field in other ways. You can also keep the field hidden from the API in the admin panel by setting hidden to true. For admin configurations, you're able to set init collapsed and is sortable to true or false. So we'll come up here to add admin and we'll do init collapsed to be true and is sortable to false. So now when we save this, you'll see this handle be removed so it can no longer be clicked and dragged to be sorted and it is now initially collapsed instead of expanded. By default init collapsed is false so everything will be shown on page load and by default is sortable is true so you'll always be able to have the ability to click and drag sort any of your blocks by default and if you want to disable that you need to set is sortable to false. Lastly you have new unique block configurations available to you. Inside the block config you created, you're able to set labels for how the block is labeled in your admin dashboard, which we've already seen. And if you don't provide values here, it's automatically generated from the slug you provide. You can change the image that's used in your blocks drawer by setting image URL to a URL of an image you'd like to use. So for example, we don't have a URL to use, but we could add our image URL and set that equal to just as an example, google.com slash path to image. And that would, in theory, replace the default image with this image from this imaginary image path. If you use image URL, you may want to include an alt text as well, which you can do by including image alt text and putting in what the image is about here in this option. You'll see two new pieces of data that are generated automatically for you as well. Block type is saved as the slug of the block, allowing you to map through your block's array to render data on the front end. And block name adds an option to the admin panel to allow editors to edit the label of their blocks for better readability. At the time of this recording, there is no way to programmatically set the block name using a function. So right here you can see the block name, which is currently set to untitled, but we can do block test and now that is named. Then we can come here to the API and scroll down to our block. And we see the block type, content with media, and block name, which is what we just typed in as the block name in our admin panel. Blocks are an incredibly powerful and flexible tool that allows you to create customizable layouts using blocks that you define. You have many options available to you at the field, admin, and block config levels, so you can truly create these blocks to be anything you want them to be. 
We'll cover how to render these blocks on the front end in a later video, so check to make sure you're subscribed and enable notifications to never miss an update. If this was helpful to you, please like the video and share it with others that will find it helpful as well. Please leave suggestions and questions in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.